you ever been here before? No, I have not. Oh, cool. Survivors, family members, long haulers and strangers all impacted by COVID-19 descended together on Washington, D.C. for one main reason, to be heard. It is a war out there. And not only are people dying, people feel invisible. Volunteers and advocates from COVID support groups around the country spent three days on Capitol Hill meeting with lawmakers and staff from both sides of the aisle. Congress hasn't done nearly enough. Their requests range from more economic relief to a new federal holiday commemorating everyone impacted by the virus. Christian Urquiza lost her father to COVID in June 2020 and shared her story during last summer's Democratic National Convention. After her father's death, she formed Mark by COVID, a group now lobbying Congress to pass a bill making the first Monday in March COVID-19 Victims and Survivors Memorial Day. My message to lawmakers is that our community feels absolutely ignored. There has been next to nothing to recognize our losses and to really say that these losses matter and that these people's lives matter. Getting meetings this week was so hard. Some meetings went better than others. He did say that federal holidays are really expensive. They cost a lot of money, uh, which I also think is really crappy thing to say to somebody who's grieving. Like, I'm sorry, that's too expensive to remember your loved ones. Over 600,000 people in the U.S. have died from COVID-19, but these survivors want more than recognition. Orkiza says the stimulus checks alone weren't enough to keep Americans afloat. Most people within our community are experiencing multiple harms. She's concerned about what might happen when the eviction moratorium ends on July 31st. We have 6 million people right now who have been surviving um, because they're, they have not been required to pay their rent. What's going to happen when that expires? People potentially are going to be on the streets during a pandemic. But not everyone taking part in the lobbying effort was focused on politics. Today um, gave me um, a piece of her father's flannel shirt, which will be um, turned into a memorial square. Madeline Fouget is the 14 year old behind the COVID memorial quilt, a project that started as a school assignment. So we just had to do something to help our community through COVID. And when I was trying to figure out what I should do, my mom told me how she had worked on the AIDS memorial quilt and how it had really helped at that time. And it was really healing and magical to her. She's received over 500 submissions from as far away as New Zealand. The quilt consists of about 20 separate panels and she has no plans to slow down. We're always getting squares, we're always accepting squares and there will always be panels in the works. She hopes her trip to DC helps her find a permanent home to display the quilt. I really hope these people get remembered. That's really, at the end of the day, my goal. While the fate of the new federal holiday is still unclear, there is no doubt the COVID-19 pandemic created a new pool of grassroots advocates who are learning to navigate the halls of Congress and advocate for their own needs. Stephanie Liebergen, Newsy, Washington.